How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do A Tech and it's been some time since I've last made a tech news video but I'm back to inform you guys of all of the tech that is happening on in the tech world. We have a bunch of AMD news like the rumored 64 core Threadripper, new X590 motherboards, and then also Intel possibly getting back in the game with their 10 nanometer ISA like CPUs. But just before that, if you guys are in the market for a new super fast NVMe SSD, then Rebel Tech has you covered with the new SN750 range of NVMe SSDs from Western Digital. With capacities ranging from 250 all the way up to 2 terabytes, sequential reads up to 3500 megabytes a second and writes up to 3000 megabytes a second. So if you guys want to get one of these WD SN750 SSDs for yourself, just follow the link in the video description where you can get it from Rebel Tech. So jumping into our first topic, AMD did release MSRP pricing for their new Ryzen 3000 series CPUs, but now we've actually got our first look at what it's going to cost almost retail. So the Danish retailer Complete.dk listed prices for the Ryzen 3000 series and then the X570 boards on their website. The pricing they listed is in Danish crowns and they did add a 25% sales tax. So it is a bit higher than the previous mentioned prices from AMD, which is on MSRP, but this can kind of give us an idea how much it will really cost once it's on the shelves. So the prices mentioned here is firstly in the Danish crowns with a 25% sales tax. Then there's also the second option, which shows it without the 25% sale tax. Then also for all of my South African viewers, I did also add it in Rand with that 25% sales tax because that is kind of going to be the closest to what we're actually going to see here of Africa because again we're gonna have to pay tax on that sales and all of that so it is gonna be quite more expensive now again that is with all of the sales tax and everything it might be different in different regions but this is kind of an indicator at how much it might cost Along with the Ryzen 3000 CPUs, Complete also listed various X570 motherboards from MSI and a Gigabyte. Reports did mention in the beginning that the new X570 chipset is going to be more expensive compared to the previous generation on the X470 and that does look to be the case. So even though the X570 chipset does bring out new and improved features like the PCI Express 4.0 standard, it will also somewhat depend on your wallet to how much you are willing to spend. Uh, otherwise, you can just go for the previous X470 which will again still work. So we're seeing it ranging from around $255 all the way up to $1,110 for gigabytes of boards and then MSI is ranging all the way from $255 to $930 for the MSI Meg Godlike. Now they did also list some ASUS boards but all of these were just listed at $600 so it's most likely just a placeholder they don't have the conferred pricing for those yet. Then moving on to our next topic. Even though AMD has not released the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs yet, that didn't stop them from showing off what the new Ryzen 9 3950X is capable of at E3 2019. So using LN2 liquid nitrogen, they were able to overclock the 16 core 32 thread beast to break three previous world records held by Intel. Now, of course, these records were on a custom BIOS voltage and then LN2 so don't expect us normal guys to be able to reach all of those records once we actually get ours that was just super high-end overclocking but we did see that the Ryzen 3950X was able to run the Cinebench and get a score of 5434 points which is around 110 14 points higher than the previous uh, record held by Intel also in Cinebench R20 they got around 12167 points against 10895 then for the last one, they broke the Geekbench 4 benchmark with a score of 65,499, also around 5,000 points above 
Intel. Then uh, moving on with more AMD news, reports have it, and we even knew this from a while back because there was a lot of speculations, AMD is working on a 64 core, 128 thread monster CPU, which is reportedly going to be re released in a Q4 of 2019, which is, now currently we do have the W2990X, which just has a measly 32 cores and 64 threads, and AMD is having none of that, and they're trying to up their game by doubling their cores and their threads for the new third generation Threadripper CPUs. So I know a lot of us is looking forward to that, but then how about the chipset platform? So currently there's, the naming scheme is kind of unknown. Some reports are saying that it's gonna be the X499 platform. Some is gonna say it's the X599. So it's not entirely confirmed yet. Intel was reportedly going to use the X499 platform, but they gone to the X299G instead at Computex. So they might still rename it to X499 or they might use X499 for something else or AMD might use it. We're not entirely sure yet. It's still a bit confusing. But most of the reports say that AMD is rather gonna go for X599. Now then, as for pricing for the 64 core Threadripper Beast, it might retail for around $2,500 or up to $3,000, which is still honestly not too bad compared against Intel with their 18 core that already costs around $1,800. However, we will still have to wait and see what the clock speed is going to be, what the boost and all of that. But if the new Ryzen 3000 is any indicators that these ones is gonna definitely be quite powerful. Now, I know we had a bunch of AMD news, but just our last topic from AMD. Apparently, we are gonna get a X590 chipset for Ryzen 3000. Now, last year, AMD was planning to release an X490 chipset, but they canceled it due to high production cost. But maybe this year, we're actually going to get one. The rumor started after an author for a DRAM calculator for Ryzen 1 Usmus, I don't know how to pronounce it, posted a picture of an ASUS ROG motherboard labeled X590 coming soon. However, afterwards, a forum member on the computer-based forum provided even more evidence of the X590 chipset hidden within the BIOS for the X570 motherboards, an X590 chipset name was listed next to X570. Now, as for the difference between X570 and X970, most likely it's just gonna have higher graded components and then it'll possibly have a more PCI Express 4.0 lanes. However, being that the X570 platform is already going to be more expensive compared to the previous generation, we can just imagine how much X590 will cost. Now, even though we have so much new news from AMD, it's not all bad news for Intel. A member on one of the Chinese forums showcased some single core performance benchmarks using a CPU Z, where it showed off how Intel's new Ice Lake CPUs based off the 10 nanometer Sunny Curve architecture can actually perform. Now, we already know that Intel is pretty much dominating the single core performance compared to AMD. So it's no surprise that they are really doing quite well here. If these benchmarks are to be believed, uh, it doesn't seem entirely legit. We will have to take it with a grain of salt. But from the result, it does look like the Ryzen, for example, Ryzen 7 3800X is overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz and got a score of 635. However, the Core i7 1065G7, which is a bit too long, kind of shorten it up a bit, which is a four core and eight thread CPU, scored a four points higher at 639, but was only running at 3.7 gigahertz. They also had a six core 12 thread CPU, but it didn't have any code names, but that one was running at 3.6 gigahertz and scored 630 points. Intel did state that their new Ice Lake CPUs does have an 18% IPC improvement compared to their previous generation on some workloads. But also, this was only single core performance benchmarks. I want to see how they perform in 
multi-threaded applications, being that the one is only four cores and eight threads. Yeah, we will have to wait and see. Then getting into our final topic, and we finally have some news from NVIDIA. We all saw that teaser video that they released showcasing their kind of super GPU range. Now, we haven't gotten anything else out from NVIDIA, not even from Computex 2019 or E3 2019. So what is going on there? So some reports are saying that it's going to be announced later this month and then it's going to be released in mid-July. Now as for what it actually is, it's pretty much just a refresh of their current Turing architecture and we can't really say how much it's going to cost because we don't know anything yet but we know it's going to be more expensive. Now even though NVIDIA hasn't released anything yet, we do have some rumor specs from our reliable sources like VideoCardZ.com and Igor Waloschlik, I'm sorry about the name, from Tom's Harbor, Germany. So taking the information they have and starting with their new entry level RTX cards, it is reported that the GeForce RTX 2060 Super will basically be a cut on version of the RTX 2070 non-Super. It will feature the TU106 410 GPU with a full 256-bit memory bus. Then moving up to the RTX 2070 Super, this one will reportedly have an extra 256 CUDA cores and that's thanks to the TU104 410 GPU. Finally, we have the RTX 2080 Super, which is based upon the TU104 450 GPU, which will boast 3072 CUDA cores, up from the 2944. It'll have a faster GDDR6 memory, upwards from 14 gigabits per second up to 16 gigabits per second. Now there's no other information of a RTX 2080 Ti Super or lower than that really like an, a GTX equivalent. Yeah, but yeah, that's kind of where it's at at the moment. We'll have to wait till Nvidia officially releases their information, but it's pretty much just to combat AMD with their new RT car, uh, with their new RX cards. There's no real reason for them to release these. It's gonna be more expensive. Performance, I don't believe it's going to be that much more. It's pretty much going to fall right in between all of their other GPUs. It's just to combat AMD and we'll have to wait for pricing and even that. So, yeah. So then that is pretty much it for our first tech news video in a really long time. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know down in the comments below. Let me know about what you think of the new Ryzen 3000, new Threadripper rumors about NVIDIA Super and then everything else mentioned. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. And also if you guys like this video, please like, share, subscribe and comment like always. Let me know if you want more of these and then I will check all of you next time. Thanks for watching guys. Cheers.